book and what I'm talking about in terms of a solution is a way of thinking about a financial services system. And by financial services, I don't just mean credit cards or uh, checking accounts and bank accounts. What I mean is a system that provides investments. And by investments, I mean certainly commercial loans, I mean mortgage loans. I, and yes, I do mean equity to individuals that are trying to make a difference in lower income communities. And that work is work that has been going on for decades, long before we had movements like uh, ESG investing, which is something we talk about now. My work is about ways that that system, by being more democratic, small d, can be one that helps solve some of the ongoing inequality and some of the ongoing uh, disparities in racial wealth and some of the disparities in minority home ownership, minority business ownership that we see in our society. The emerging domestic market concept, which is again, one that I've been developing over the last decade and a half is one that says, even without unrest and without corporate pronouncements to do something in their communities, there, these markets are growing faster. They are experiencing income growth at rates we haven't seen before. And they have fundamental characteristics that make them unserved opportunities that businesses and other investors can come along and participate just as they did years ago in those so-called foreign emerging markets. And so the notion is less charitable, um, not that the benefits of growth in those markets won't be achieved and won't spill over to individuals that live in those communities, but the benefits that are derived aren't necessarily through that mindset of coming with a handout. It's coming to create a partnership and grow new institutions. We were interested in whether a community development bank would tend again to be more inefficient, more costly to run because it was doing work in low income areas, or whether it would be more likely to fail in an economic downturn. And so one of our studies looked at the period inclusive of uh, the recent financial crisis of the 2000s. And guess what? What we found was that pound for pound, dollar for dollar, asset for asset, community development banks were no more likely to fail and were no less efficient than banks of comparable size. In fact, what we found in certain periods, they were less likely to fail. You know, more recently, I've done some work looking at minority depository institutions. So these are banks and credit unions that focus on serving minority communities. They're often run by minorities, these could be African-Americans, these could be Latinx folks, these could be Native Americans, these can be Asian Americans. And they, these minority depository institutions are often serving lower income communities. And guess what? Turns out again, the finding is that those banks actually outperform given their size and scope relative to other types of financial institutions. So not only are they less likely to fail. Not only are they more efficient, if you looked at where they are, relatively speaking, they get far less in dollars, uh, that is deposits and assets, um, than you'd think given their performance. In this book, I share a number of the experiences that I have had in the financial services system. And I point out there are a set of benefits that I've had that accrued to me even before I was born. Those were things that my grandparents and my parents were able to do. My grandparents, unlike many African-Americans, uh, my grandfather and grandmother served in World War II. They were able to get uh, the what's now known as the GI Bill, the, service, the Servicemen's Readjustment Act loan. And with that loan, uh, 
uh, they were able to buy a home in 19, in the 1940s that uh, they raised my father in. And my father, as a benefit of having that asset, had a solidly middle-class life. Then uh, as my father became a man, uh, grew up, left home, he joined the US military. And in joining the US military and becoming an officer, he came at a time when the US military was instituting across the board integration, integration in housing, integration in schools, integration in facilities. And as a result, I was able to be educated in both communities, in housing and in places that were integrated from the time I started uh, school. Many African-Americans had neither the experience of my grandparents or the experience I have, people my age, of having been in integrated school systems. You know, I could go on, but what I try to do in the book throughout is to point out ways that I've had both challenges, because I have had challenges, and I've had advantages. And those challenges and advantages accrue from structural factors rather than from either the benefit of my own individual labors or sometimes when we think about what we call inequalities in our markets, we think that the driving factor is discrimination. And while that may be, and while that is an important discussion, what I've tried to do with my work is say that rather than ferret out and look for someone who is um, vilified that we can point to who's been a deliberate discriminator, my work has said there are structural things that have nothing to do with one person's animus that enable some of us to move through the system with ease and cause some of us lots of friction. One of the first things I'd like you to do is challenge your assumptions. You may not be right about uh, the extent to which these risks or these inefficiencies or these bad behaviors are real. And I'd encourage you to come to this book with fresh eyes around asking yourself whether you're right. Next, I'd love all of us to really think about how we interact with the financial services system and whether there are things we can do to make sure that for those of us that have advantages in the system, we can ensure others do. And that could be putting deposits in institutions that operate in those communities. There's some people who think banking is a bad news industry that only cares about the rich. It doesn't, and it doesn't have to. And there are many individuals that are working in the field, they're featured in the book, who do care about the rest of us. And if you're one of the people that's encouraged by that idea, and you think a nonprofit is the only place you might want to go, you could go, you could find your way to a broader base of financial institutions that could help be the change you're looking for. Then at the policy level, what I'd love to see is while we think about income supports, we think about ways of changing uh, policy to help people right now during COVID with the short-term problems they're gonna have. Hopefully we're gonna get through these COVID challenges. And then the question is going to be, what types of financial fractures are we still gonna have? And so that time will be one where these institutions that are on the ground in lower income minority communities are gonna be the ones that can help rebuild those communities. And so my real strong advice is if we can think about policy in ways that um, put more capital in those institutions.